Welcome to Prophecy Countdown with author and pastor Kenneth Baer. Join us every week for the latest updates on what the Bible has to say about the events, the characters, and prophetic signs of the return of Jesus Christ and His coming kingdom. Make sure you not only subscribe, but like your favorite episodes and share it with your friends. Now, on with the broadcast. To a Prophecy Countdown. I'm Pastor uh, Ken Bear uh, with Faith Dialogue, and we provide two updates each week um, of on our video and our audio channels on this, uh, this uh, podcast called Prophecy Countdown. Now, on Sundays, uh, we are going through the Gospel of Matthew, and we go through chapter by chapter and verse by verse. This is the way that we, we love teaching through the Scriptures. This week, I'll be in chapter 10. My message today will be episode number 303, Matthew chapter 10, Persecutions Are Coming. Our Sunday messages uh, premiere uh, at 1 p.m. Uh, every Sunday, and then they're shown again at 6 p.m. And of course, they're I archive. You can always go to our archives and, and see any of our previous messages. Uh, our, our second uh, podcast for each week is on Wednesdays. And Wednesdays, our video and audio podcast are always updates on prophecy. Uh, you know, prophecy has been just something that God has, has opened the doors for us. Um, and uh, we love being able to talk about prophecy. We get a lot of questions on prophecy. In fact, that's typically how we uh, determine what we're going to teach on every single Wednesday. It's because of questions that have been received by people like you. You can always uh, send us an email uh, by, by sending an email to prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. I'll say that again. That's prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, we'll respond to every single one of those questions. And uh, that's exa exactly where we get our, our questions for our updates once a week. So let's get, get started on our, on our Sunday message. Uh, again, my message today is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 21 through 26, just five verses. And the message is entitled, Perse Persecutions Are Coming. Let me read the scripture first to you. It's uh, chapter 10, verse, starting in verse 21. Jesus says, Now brother will deliver a brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in the city, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Verse 24, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. You know, Jesus personally uh, took his chosen group, what Matthew calls the twelve, we know them as the apostles, and he uniquely commissioned to them to go to, to Galilee. However, now in Galilee, Galilee was really a Gentile territory. Uh, Galilee was far north. It was even north of Samaria, and there were many, many Gentiles that were there. But Jesus tells them, he says this, he says, rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, they would perform miracles and proclaim his message. And we saw that in the beginning of chapter 10, especially. Now, here Jesus changes the horizon. He's looking further than the immediate um, assignment of these apostles, these 12, to go into Galilee. Jesus, beginning our verses today that, we, that I read, beginning in verse 21, um, is discussing a, a future period, a future period that includes the age of the church and it takes us all the way uh, to today. This not only includes when these apostles uh, that went out would actually face arrest and go before courts and tribunals and kings and governors, uh, but it also includes, again, the age of the church. What we've seen over the last 2,000 years, we've had opportunities uh, in the church that we've faced very, very challenging situations that, that present us with the opportunity to share uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and preach the gospel to individuals in all walks of life. And this has been the mission of the church. It's called the Great Commission. Now, the title of my message, however, is not the opportunities are coming, but persecutions are coming. And this is what Jesus said, as Jesus here is emphasizing how fierce 
the opposition to him and the gospel message actually is. The message that Jesus brings that we're entrusted to will not only create conflict for those that are in authority, the gospel message of Jesus will also bitterly divide families. You know, in some places, men will turn over their own children and brothers to the authorities to carry out the death sentence against Christians. Fathers will do the same to their children, children likewise to the, the parents. Now, throughout the course of church history, persecution has of, often been a consistent element. Uh, persecution in the church has, has been with us since the, the time of the apostles. These apostles and a multitude of other unnamed companions and followers during the time of the apostles were among the first to encounter resistance, to encounter persecution. Uh, they were denied, they had physical sufferings due to their unwavering faith. Now in our scripture today, Jesus takes the initiative to equip the disciples for the challenges they will encounter while spreading the gospel. And that's where our message takes us today, is how are we equipped to be able to deal with the persecution that's coming? Well, let me provide you with, with three points, three impacts or, or effects of persecution on the church. Realizing first that, that persecution is inevitable. And I want to spend some time on that before we get into three points, because many people, especially in the Western world, don't realize how persecuted the church actually is. You know, persecution has been a constant reality uh, for believers throughout history. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 20 and 21, Jesus warns his disciples that they will face opposition and persecution. However, he says this, he says that the Holy Spirit will guide their words. Uh, what they need to speak, it's gonna be the Holy Spirit. And this is prophecy. And it's echoed in other gospel accounts as well. In John, for example, chapter 15, Jesus tells his disciples that the world will hate them because it first hated them, hated him. In, in uh, John chapter 6, he, he encourages to his followers to, to rejoice in the face of persecution. The book of Acts provides numerous examples of the early church facing persecution. For example, in, in Acts chapter 4, we did Acts just a few years ago, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. In, verse chap in chapter 4, Peter and John are arrested and, and brought before the religious authorities pr uh, before proclaiming the name of Jesus. And if you remember what happened is that Peter says, we must do the work of the Lord. Now, shortly after that, we come into one of the first deacons, a deacon named Stephen. And Stephen became the first martyr in the church. Uh, Stephen was stoned to death for his, his unwavering faith. His unwavering faith. So now we've established that persecution is inevitable. And that means that it's also coming to your neighborhood as well. There are three effects or three impacts or outcomes of persecution against the church. And let me take them one at a time. The first one is this, is that God makes persecution serve the mission. I'll say that again. God makes persecution actually serve the mission, which we know as the Great Commission. And if we reference the book of Acts in, in chapter 8, we read that the account of Stephen, the first martyr, we clearly see that God makes persecution serve the Great Commission. You know, up to this point in the book of Acts, the ministry uh, of, uh, of the gospel after Jesus had ascended in heaven was concentrated in Judea. Uh, in fact, close to Jerusalem, uh, with very little movement, if any, towards Judea and Samaria. However, Jesus had told them, remember in the Great Commission, he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall to be my witnesses in, in where? In Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And we've seen maps where you, these are concentric circles going out from Jerusalem to be able to take the gospel. Uh, but by the time before Stephen was actually stoned, almost all of the ministry was still focused right around Jerusalem. But then we read this in chapter 8 of, of Acts. It says, At that time a great persecution arose against the church which was in Jerusalem, and they were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Verse 3 says, And Saul... He made a havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Now, see, here's the thing. This persecution against the church was horrible, but God had a, had a purpose in it. 
And one of the things it did is it scattered the church, it scattered the message of the gospel throughout, uh, throughout Samaria and, and the outer parts of the world. Uh, the, early person that cute, uh, the, the, the early persecution of the church brought on by Saul, now Saul would later be known as the great apostle Paul, this early persecution served the mission of the church where Jesus said, be my witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, without, without persecution, would have the church spread? Well, most likely, but it would have taken some time. But, but God, uh, through, his, through his wisdom, used, um, because persecution was breaking out, used that as an opportunity basically to scatter the church and to be able to spread the gospel. So that's number one, is that the persecution actually serves the mission. Point number two is fear brings on fight rather than flight. Now that's kind of an interesting combination, isn't it? Especially for a church sermon. Fear brings on fight rather than flight. Now we don't usually talk, use the word fight, do we? Uh, when we talk about spreading the gospel. Um, but I'm juxtaposing or contrasting the word fight with the word flight. They sound alike, but they're completely different. Another word that is similar to flight is the word fear. So the idea is this, is that persecution brings flight and fear, but it also brings fight. Jesus encourages disciples not to fear those who are persecuted, but to fear God, who has ultimate authority and knowledge. You know, fear can often paralyze some. You've heard about the, 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 the look of a deer caught in the high headlights. You, and we, you know, we lived in Pennsylvania for a number of years, and there were deer everywhere. And there's deer, I know, almost in every state. But especially in our neighborhood, there were deer everywhere. And it was, un, it was unusual to find somebody, I was one of them, that had not hit a deer with a car because the deer were all over the place. And one of the things the deer would do is when the headlights hit them, uh, they would be fearful and they would, they would stop and, and they would just completely freeze because of, the, because of the fear. However, when we see the gospel accounts in the book of Acts and we see the accounts of the Apostle Paul, we see that, that the truism fear brings fight is actually what happened and not only Paul but also many of the early disciples and we see it continuing today. It highlights that often persecution is a catalyst, a catalyst for determining an action uh, that actually counteracts the, the, uh, the, effects of the, uh, the effects of the persecution. Notice in the verse before this, uh, Jesus says that when you experience persecution in one town, just go to the next. Go to the next. Don't be frozen, but use your wisdom. God will give you the ability to, to be able to fight, to be able to, to, to find a way around, to be able to continue to spread the gospel. If you go back to the, to the story of uh, Saul, uh, who was persecuted in the church on the road to Damascus, Saul encountered the risen Christ, and this resulted in a radical transformation and despite his previous hostility, fear arose within him. He was blinded. Remember, he was fearful. He was confronted with the reality of his actions, and he realized the, the might of Jesus Christ, who had been persecuting. Following his conversion, Saul, then named Paul, faced intense persecution for his faith. He endured physical harm, imprisonment, constant opposition for both Jewish as well as the Roman authorities. In 2 Corinthians, Chapter 4, 11, for example, Paul details the various hardships he encountered. He talks about beatings and shipwrecks and flogging and faced danger from various sources. Paul's fear, however, was not a paralyzing force, but it, it encouraged him to be uh, to, to more action. Uh, he was determined to be able to fulfill the commandment that God had given him to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Or in other words, fear brought on a fight response in this apostle. Now, psychologists today will tell you that this flight or fight response is common uh, to almost all people. Uh, to people that it's an automatic psychological re reaction to danger, to persecution, or something that's terrifying. Uh, we'll either flee or we will fight. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. You see, in that case, the fear of the Lord 
brings on a, a fight response. We, we, we persuade others. This fear, rooted in reverence for God, propels Paul to passionately and persistently share the message of salvation. Now, while we're not promised any protection in the face of persecution, we see that in Acts chapter 18, for example, that the Lord encouraged Paul. And he said this, he said, do not be afraid. I love that. Paul facing persecution, the Lord says, do not be afraid, but go on speaking and do not be silent, for I am with you. You know, sometimes if you know that the Lord is with you, it's amazing what we can actually accomplish. We can accomplish much more. We can overcome our fear and we can continue on the mission that God has given us. You know, through Paul's example, we can learn that fear, while anchored in the fear of the Lord, can ignite a fierce resolve to fulfill God's purpose in our lives and overcome the obstacles that come in our way. Have you ever, have you ever tried to share your faith? Do you realize how, how fearful that can be? But there are those that can overcome that fear and they find a way to, to persevere to overcome the fear, and they have this fight to be able to, to take the gospel, to take the gospel, and if necessary, take it everywhere possible, and they overcome their fear because they have this fight response. I love that. Number three out of three, persecution reveals the truth. I love that. Persecution reveals the truth. You know, it's a great divider between truth and error. It really is. Jesus provides his disciples with great assurance in the face of persecution. He says, therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. That's verse 26. As Jesus is instructing his disciples before sending them out to proclaim the gospel, he's also letting them know that he will be revealing truth to them. These things that are hidden, he says, in verse 26, will be revealed. He actually saw, we actually saw this earlier, Jesus told the disciples that they were to be wise. Verse 16 that we talked about last week said, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You know, sending his disciples out among wolves exposes them, doesn't it? If you sent your children out to play around uh, wolves, you're exposing them to persecution that they'll encounter. However, the truth is that when believers face hardship and even persecution, they're also given, they're given the opportunity to tap into the wisdom and protection that God gives so that they can rise to the occasion and they can overcome the obstacles. Jesus promised that when they didn't know what to say, the Holy Spirit would be able to speak through them as well. So as we finish up today, let's look at the particular persecutions that Jesus reminds us that will be common, particularly here as we uh, get closer and closer to the return of Jesus Christ. Verses 21 through 23, I'll read it again. It says, now brother, will deliver a brother against a now brother will deliver a brother to death and a father his child. His children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. You'll be hated for all by my, for my name's sake but he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another, for surely I say to you, you will have not gone through the city of Israel before the Son of Man comes. You know, Jesus knew. Jesus knew that in some cases the gospel would bitterly divide family members. And there would be some that would face persecution, um, especially among their families. The early church, remember, was almost exclusively Jewish. And then, as well as it is today, if a Jewish person takes Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, usually that, that Jewish person is ostracized from the rest of the family. There are fathers that will say, I no longer have a son um, because that son has turned his back on what the father believes is a Jewish faith. That's why many Jews today that know Jesus call themselves completed Jews. They call themselves completed Jews, but there's bitter persecution. And often it's father against son, son against father, um, a, a brother against brother. Um, most persecution that, that Christians face is actually this form. It's separation, it's banishments, it's economic. Uh, through the centuries, literally millions have given their, their lives uh, to Jesus Christ, have found that uh, they've been banished. Uh, they've been separated from their families. In, in Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, uh, this is the second thing that Jesus has to say about particular persecutions that coming. He says, A disciple is not above his teacher, 
nor a servant above his master. It's not enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. For if they've called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? You know, Jesus is telling um, his disciples, and that includes uh, you and me, my friends, that the disciples would not expect to be treated any better than Jesus was treated. You know, by calling uh, Jesus Beelzebub, that's very common to today, uh, calling someone the son of a devil. Now, actually, when uh, that, that, that Beelzebub saying, you son of the devil, uh, when they compare Jesus to the son of the devil, that's actually what's called blasphemy. And, and I think it's very, very close to, uh, to what uh, Paul refers to as the sin against the Holy Spirit. Uh, to attribute the wonders of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ to the devil is the ultimate sin of blasphemy. Blasphemy can be defined as the act of insulting or showing contempt or lack of reverence to God. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when you take the true work of the Holy Spirit, work of conversion, for example, or sanctification, or salvation, and you speak evil of it, attributing the work to the devil himself. Now, our final verse, verse 26 today, was this. Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. You know, I mentioned before that this was one of the three elements um, that, we, that accompanies persecution. Uh, this knowledge, this wisdom, this, this insight uh, that often accompanies uh, persecutions. Uh, these likely have been, there have been many times, you as a Christian believer, you as a disciple of Jesus Christ, have, have found that you receive knowledge, you receive wisdom, uh, when others seem to be befuddled. It seems like you're, you're hearing something that others can't hear. You're seeing clearly when others can't see. This is called spiritual discernment, my friend. It's one of the spiritual gifts that God gives us as believers. It refers to the ability to perceive, to understand, and to judge particular spiritual matters or truths through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the gifts of the Spirit. It's the capacity to distinguish between what is of God and what is not. Uh, to recognize the voice of God and to make wise decisions aligned with God's will uh, for your life. You know, Pastor John MacArthur, I, I love listening to Pastor John MacArthur. He calls spiritual discernment the spiritual gift that's most needed in the church today. And I completely agree with him. Spiritual discernment is the gift that's most needed in the church today. We live in a world that has literally turned our moral compasses upside down. Uh, truth is no longer truth. The prophet Isaiah nearly 2,800 years ago warned us about these times. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, he says this. He says, woe to them. Listen to this. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, that count darkness as light and light as darkness, that puts bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's such a fitting description of what Isaiah said 27, 2800 years ago of what's going on in the world today. I mean, just think about it. In the last few years, marriage has been redefined. A family is no longer thought to be a mother and a father with children. Laws that were designed to protect the victims now fortify the aggressor. Truth is no longer absolute. It becomes pliable in the hands of those that are ungodly, immoral, and wicked. My friends, all of this, I believe, is just more indication that this time, this time is coming to a close that we are getting closer and closer to the return of Jesus Christ. And we're closer, and we know that today, more than any time in the past, right? Because today is further than it was yesterday. Persecution has always been a part of the Christian faith. It's always been part of the Christian church. But what we're seeing today is new ways and new methods you know, to isolate and to remove the one message, the one message that actually brings hope and the promise of forgiveness of sin and eternal life. My friends, today more than ever, you need to share the gospel with your friends and your family. Uh, they, are, they are hearing so many other messages and they need to hear the one message that, that Jesus truly loves them, that he died on the cross for their sin, that they can receive, receive forgiveness for all of the sins of their past and their future. And they can have eternal life with Jesus Christ. You need to share that message today. Or, or the other way to look at it today is what needs to be on our lips is come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen? Before I pray, I want to encourage you to and remind you to please uh, like, uh, share, 
and, uh, and subscribe uh, to these video and audio podcasts. It's the best way that we can uh, promote this and to have more and more people hear these messages. The video and audio podcast is a ministry of Faith Dialogue. Faith Dialogue is an evangelical church, a 501c3 ministry, and we are honored and encouraged uh, by your viewing this and by sharing it with others. And we just want to encourage you in Jesus' name. Let me pray. Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, Lord. Nearly every day, it's common to see, read, or hear something about the end of the world, the apocalypse, or end times. Author and pastor Kenneth Baer's The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom zooms in and breaks down biblical prophecy as it relates to Jesus' imminent return and the coming seven-year period, including the Great Tribulation. Available in both paperback and Kindle versions. Get your copy on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble and select Christian bookstores. The title again is The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom. You can also find it listed by author Kenneth Baer. Get your copy today. Thank you for joining us on Prophecy Countdown with Pastor Ken Baer. Don't leave without first sharing the latest episode with your friends. Be sure to join us again for the latest updates on Prophecy Countdown.